The second ever Yu-Gi-Oh! limited list was released in July 2002. Mirror Force was limited to one, and Sangan, Witch of the Black Forest, and Heavy Storm were all semi-limited to two. However, a few months later, Tournament Pack 1 was released on September 1st, 2002. While most of the cards in this pack were largely irrelevant, one card in particular embodies the very essence of power creep, Mechanical Chaser. Mechanical Chaser has a mere 50 more attack points compared to La Jin, or seven colored fish. This would highlight a massive difference when it came to efficiently winning those exchanges and maintaining board presence, emphasizing the fact that players who own Mechanical Chaser had a tremendous advantage over players who did not. In this series, both MBT and myself will be traversing the sands of Yu-Gi-Oh's history. Each episode will take a deep dive into Yu-Gi-Oh's past formats and unlock new strategies as new sets become available. Strap yourselves in because anything is possible. Welcome to the history of Yu-Gi-Oh! That's right, three copies. How much?! Oh, sorry, I said how much, I just pulled the phone away from my face for comedic effect. Yeah, pay it. I'm not taking any chances. Well, it's week five! And we still haven't won a match. Now, I haven't been particularly pleased with my own personal level of play, but let's not pretend that that last best of three wasn't just decided by whoever drew Pot of Greed. This is still Magician of Faith format, and as a result, the individual who is most able to effectively loop the powerful limited and semi-limited spells is likely going to be the one that walks with it. However, we can reduce the level of variance in our individual games by metagaming. Now, I know this sounds... A little suspect. After all, metagaming, which is when you are able to read the room effectively, determining what your opponent is playing, and ensuring you have a good matchup, seems a little suspect if the format is small enough that there's really only two or three playable decks, and you only have one opponent. However, I still think we can do just a little bit of it with Alex specifically. Alex is a lot of things, but Spontaneous isn't one of them. Throughout the progression series and throughout the history of Yu-Gi-Oh, he has been playing slow, greedy control decks, and what punishes those? Aggro. So I've engineered a deck that is as aggressive as possible to close out games before they get to the point where Alex is able to loop things like Pot of Greed. Ideally, we'll be able to make him potentially even choose reactive spells like Fissure or Regeki off of early Magician of Faiths for fear of dying. This is of course very complex in a format with Wabaku, but I think we have built our deck as best we can given that set of circumstances. Let me walk you through the quick card by card. First, we're playing three Dark Elf. This is a mainstay of online 2002 play, but only because of our next card, three Mechanical Chaser. Now, this card was never ever available in this amount of copies to any person. It was extremely hard to get, and at the time, why would you ever drop a thousand dollars on a vanilla three of? However, it does have 50 more attack points than Lodge in the Mystical Genie of the Lamp. It is at least at this point where type doesn't matter, net better, strictly better, whatever you want to call it, and as a result, we do have to play it. Now, Simo's going to talk a big game about how, oh, this will determine the outcome. The existence of Mechanical Chaser gives Joseph an insurmountable handicap. These are just Johns for future games. Simo knows that this streak can't last forever, and they're already putting up defensive walls like the Wall of Illusion to ensure that they aren't made fun of in the comments. Let me assure you, Mechanical Chaser is extremely strong. It will not win the game on its own. What it will do is be part of a larger aggressive strategy of monsters with a significant amount of attack points that can threaten Simo's life total. Dark Elf and La Jin perform the exact same roll. Next, we've got two Sangan and two Witch of the Black Forest. At this point, these are semi-limited. However, we have cut our favorite witch target, Summon Skull. It just wasn't doing anything, and I want to be spending my normal summon on these monsters specifically, not tributing off something like a Spent Magician of Faith. We're also on three Wall of Illusion. Very powerful card, even this late in the format. Hard to get over, though Mechanical Chaser does walk into it without losing you any life points. And finally, of course, the Coup de Gras, three Magician of faith. This card is the backbone of the format and will be instrumental to any victory for any player. 
In terms of spells, we're playing Change of Heart. Thank you, comments, for reminding me it exists. Dark Hole. Three Fissure. I've moved away from Three Tribute uh, to the Doomed and towards Three Fissure. By flexing things like Swords of Revealing Light to flip up copies of Wall of Illusion, we can ensure that our Fissure is going to hit a profitable target. But more importantly, while Tribute to the Doomed is extremely good if you hit exactly Magician of Faith face down, it's way less good if your opponent sets a Witch of the Black Forest, as we found out in our last Best of Three. So the certainty that Fissure gives will certainly clean things up. We're also playing two Heavy Storm, also semi-limited, Monster Reborn, Pot of Greed, Raigeki, Double Swords, semi and Double Tribute. We can board into the third uh, if we so desire, but in testing, I found that it never came up. For traps, we're on Mirror Force and three Solemn Judgment. I know that in the past, I have said Solemn Judgment is not as good as you would expect in old formats. I still think that's true. However, Solemn Judgment does two things which are very important in this matchup specifically. It means that you are able to command huge swings in tempo, which is the name of the game for aggro decks. Certainly in a modern aggressive deck, you wouldn't be playing Solemn Judgment, but that's because the quality of monster that's found in the extra deck does all the heavy lifting for you. Solemn Judgment is extremely powerful at this point in time in cutting off opponents' recoverability in terms of negating things like Raigeki or Chaining Pot of Greeds or preventing their normal summon from resolving. If you can do that, you can walk away with a couple of chips from Mechanical Chaser, and suddenly it doesn't matter that you paid 4,000 life points to negate a vanilla. We've also got Wabaku for similar reasons. Um, it prevents blowouts, it allows you to be reactive with cards like Raigeki and Fissure, and at the same time, it also lets you trade profitably. That's something that probably shouldn't come up very often since we are on Mechanical Chaser, but it's still also worth including. In the side deck, we're on three copies of Maneater Bug, in case Alex is similarly on a high monster count. We're on three copies of Trap Master. Call it a hunch. We're on three copies of Remove Trap for the same reason. Three copies of Sword of Dark Destruction. A lot of individuals came uh, to me letting me know that equip spells were much more powerful than we were giving them credit for. That said, I think Alex is on enough removal spells that this isn't going to be as powerful as it was historically. However, there is a significant possibility that we get into Monster Wars and this does come up. And finally, reinforcements for similar reasons. So, 4-0. Not a fantastic place to be, but this is a good deck with better cards than Alex has access to. Pot of Greed aside, we should be able to do this. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to episode five of the History of Yu-Gi-Oh! This is gonna be an exciting one. We are in post list Metal Raiders format, which most importantly means that both Mechanical Chaser and Tournament Pack 1 are legal. Now, obviously Joseph and I could both play Mechanical Chaser, but we wanted to provide you guys with a more realistic experience of the meta at the time, and it was very difficult to acquire one copy of Mechanical Chaser, let alone three, so we came to a gentleman's agreement that neither one of us was going to play it because it makes the most sense to give you a fair and balanced back and forth game. And uh, oh, hold on one second. I actually have to take this call. Yeah, what's up? Aren't you recording for the episode? You're what? I thought we said we're... I don't care that you just came into a windfall from the Rothschildian Trust Fund. That's not my problem. Are you really going to ruin the integrity of the episode? He hung up on me. Well, it looks like Joseph's going to be on Mechanical Chaser, so this is going to make things rather interesting. Mechanical Chaser was this very interesting card because it was just a vanilla with an extra 50 attack points, but the thing is, that actually makes a very substantial difference, and we wanted to actually highlight the difference of that in this particular episode just to show how unfair it was when someone has Mechanical Chaser and someone does not. Now, I'm already up four episodes in the series, so I am on a very good win streak right now, and I actually thought it would be hilarious hilarious if I'm able to still beat him even with his availability to Mechanical Chaser. So I said, Joseph, go ahead and have your Mechanical Chaser. I'm still going to beat you anyway. And so for my deck for this episode, we are going to be playing Clown Control. This is very early stage Clown Control, mind you, but we get to talk about a very specific card here being Dream Clown. So Dream Clown's an interesting card for people who don't know. It is a card that says when this card is changed from attack position to defense position, destroy one monster on your opponent 
opponent's side of the field. This is very reminiscent of a card like Tribute to the Doomed because both cards effectively are able to clear set or even defense position monsters. That means that you can take out things before they flip, such as Magician of Faith. You can take out Walls of Illusion. And the nice part about Dream Clown specifically is that A, it doesn't minus you like Tribute to the Doom does, but B, it also maintains board presence as well, and you can do it multiple times. So for instance, if you're able to protect it with cards like Trap Hole, Swords of Revealing Light, this card can actually have added value over time, and I think that is really cool. So I wanted to play something a little bit different to showcase some of the different strategies during the Metal Raiders format. I'm sure Joseph is touting about how he is just in a prime position to win because he has access to three copies of Mechanical Chaser, and he thinks his superior deck building is going to bring him to victory. Well, we are going to go ahead and try to piss him off as much as possible by playing a strategy similar to what we were playing last episode. With that said, let's go ahead and do the rest of the lineup. So we have the three Dream Clown. This is the namesake of the deck. We also have one Crass Clown. Crass Clown is not as good as Dream Clown. Crass Clown has to be changed from defense to attack position. That does work if it is flipped face up, by the way. And instead of destroying a monster, it returns a monster to the hand. So it's kind of like a worse version of like Hain Hain or Wall of Illusion. Again, you get the added value that you can use this multiple times. This is clown control and there are multiple clowns. Crass Clown is just not nearly as good by comparison, but having it as a one of is okay. It's also 1400 defense, which actually makes it kind of meaty in the face of things like Witch of the Black Forest, Sangan, and the like. One Dark Elf is in our main deck. This is actually what they used to call a fat beater back in the day. And the reason for that is, is because it's a card that can hit over Mechanical Chaser. And that's a very big deal because when you look at the rest of our monster lineup, not really much else can take out Mechanical Chaser in the form of monsters, aside from maybe the effect of a Dream Clown. So Dark Elf as a one of is going to be able to put in a lot of work. We also have a second in the side deck if we feel we need to go that route. But again, paying a thousand life points for every single attack is a bit problematic, especially when you pair it with cards like Salt of judgment, but we'll get to that a little bit later on. Two copies of Magician of Faith. I still feel like two Magician of Faith is fine. You're not always going to have access to the power five or any of your other powerful spells. And in those instances, Magician of Faith doesn't really do a lot for you. It's searchable with the two Sangin and the two Witch, so it's perfectly okay. It's like you have six copies of it. I think two is okay. Three Wall of Illusion, this in tandem with our Robin Goblin. We are going with this strategy once again. Clown Control, again, is aiming to not only control the board in the form of tempo, but also just remove resources with the form of Robin Goblin. And so Wall of Illusion plus Robin Goblin is still the God combo. And with Heavy Storm now at two copies, this card's a lot more likely to stick around and it's going to be much more annoying. I also think Joseph might not think I will play this again, which makes it infinitely more funny now that I am. Two Witch of the Black Forest, the one seven colored fish and three Lodge In. These are just my main beaters. Obviously I'm playing the three Lodge In. This could be the second Dark Elf, but I wanted to have one that's not going to have major downsides. This would probably get swapped out for the other uh, Dark Elf very quickly. For the spells, Change of Heart, Dark Hole, three Fisher, two Heavy Storm, one Monster Reborn, one Pot of Greed, Regeki, and two Swords of Revealing Light. You might have noticed I cut Tribute to the Doom from this deck, but pretty much Dream Clown fills the same role as this card. Yeah, it's not a spell. It does require some setup, but if you have initiative, Dream Clown can do wonders compared to Tribute to the Doomed and effectively do the same thing, but also does it without having to discard a card. It really depends on the type of deck Joseph is playing, and we'll have to see how necessary it is, but I think three Fisher is going to be a lot more important, especially with Mechanical Chain chaser flying around. For the trap cards, one mirror force, it's limited now, unfortunately, but it's still going to be a good card to have one of. Three Robin Goblin, three Solemn Judgment, and three Trap Hole. These are the tempo cards that we want to keep at three. Judgment is good because not only can it negate a summon, but it can also protect our Robin Goblin from Heavy Storm. It can negate a power spell like Regeki, Dark Hole, Change of Heart. There's just a lot of good value here, and again, you're playing a control deck. You want to be able to manipulate your opponent's plays and force them into awkward situations that are going to make it difficult for them to play. Solemn Judgment, Judgment's really good. It did pretty well in the last episode, so I'm going to keep it in at least for game one in this episode. We'll see how things go. Moving on to the side deck, the second Dark Elf, the third Magician of Faith, in case I feel like I want to have more spell recursion. Three Man Eater Bugs. This is a card that I actually cut, and what's interesting is that a lot of these decks during this time didn't play a lot of Man Eater Bugs, just because it's a card that when you flip it up, it doesn't really do a whole lot. This is something I might sub in maybe one or two of for like a Wall of Illusion or a Fish or different things like that, but again, there are cards that do the same thing. 
thing. Dream Clown being one of them, but it's also a little bit more offensive and it has some more recurability just because you can use it multiple times. We'll see how it goes. The one white magical hat, Summon Skull. These cards are probably not going to come in, but I want them just in case. Three Tribute to the Doom in case I decide that that's the worst idea ever. Two Seven Tools of the Bandit to stop his potential trap card. And three Waboku. Waboku is particularly interesting in clown control because in tandem with Dream Clown, if you just go Dream Clown set Waboku, there's very few ways that they can actually out this clown. One way is Fisher or Dark Hole or Regeki, but besides that, no monster is going to be able to run it over. You're not going to take any damage. And if they commit a monster to the field on your next turn, you switch Dream Clown to defense, pop the monster, and you have a free shot at your opponent's life points. Not to mention with Robin Goblin, that's going to be very devastating. So that's the rundown of the deck. I'm really excited to showcase the power discrepancy that a card like Mechanical Chaser brought to the game, but I'm also excited to beat Joseph once again with these cards that are really going to piss him off because then he can't complain that he didn't even have an advantage because Mechanical Chaser is just that good. So let's go ahead and reconnect with Joseph because it is time to duel. So Joseph, I don't know if you checked your email right before we started this, but I actually sent you a draft of a divorce decree after the last episode. Uh, that might be something that you need to take advantage of, especially the fact that you're still wearing the shirt of shame. So uh, sorry about that, buddy. Okay, well, what if I told you that uh, I actually haven't changed out of the shirt of shame since then? <laughs> uh, I've spent the last seven days just uh, miserably uh, labbing this unbeatable deck on my bed. And, and thankfully, I have come together with... An unstoppable strategy to which you are completely unprepared. It's nice that the uh, Rothschildian Trust Fund came to your aid and has uh, provided you with these lovely playset of mechanical chasers that are very impossible to find at the moment. <laughs> whoa, whoa, whoa. I was gifted these mechanical chasers through a generous donation um, due to these Raycon headphones. I don't know if you've heard about these. <laughs> You know, to be fair, that would be a great segue for an ad, but luckily we're not going to do that. But before we start, we do have to shout out a patron as always for supporting us over on Patreon. So big shout outs to Christopher Plumo. You are awesome. Joseph, you ready to go 5-0, and oh, buddy? Or 0-5, uh, oh that's more accurate because I'm the one going 5-0 and oh after this episode. <laughs> we, we'll see. We'll see. I am feeling pretty confident about this one, but... I mean, I was unprepared for Robin Zombie. I think I'm going to be unprepared for whatever you have put together uh, today. Robin Goblin, sir. Robin Zombie is a terrible card. Who would play that? Oh, unlike, unlike Robin Goblin. <laughs> oh, the paper strat coming back in clutch. I was doing my die roll, so apparently uh, the paper willed the die to roll that rock. That's the only reason why you won that. Okay. Um. All right. Okay. I've stared at this array of cards over and over again for hours these past two weeks, and it never gets any less debilitating to open a hand and think, God, this is going to be decided on whatever Alex rips. Is, isn't that any card game? <laughs> well, I mean, uh, in modern Yu-Gi-Oh, I can look at the opening hand, and if I'm going first, decide who wins the entire set right there. That was a nice uh, uh, wall of illusion you just set there. Would you like to take that back and do it again? <laughs> uh, that was a dueling book error. Uh, I, I have no idea. Uh, this could be anything. It was actually oh, a next God. level bait. I'm going to set Trap Master and see if you notice. All right. I will draw. Shout outs to the people in the comments who said we didn't draw going first. Uh, both, in the, both of us once each in the fourth episode. We're just not used to drawing cards. It's so bizarre. I'm going to pretend like I didn't see that. And maybe that's just you doing that like bandit key thing from the anime where you accidentally dropped a card to like bait Joey into doing something. That's very possible. And if that's the case, fine. But I will just go ahead and uh, set a monster. Yes, I will just pass the turn. Go ahead. This is Yu-Gi-Oh, ladies and gentlemen. Set pass, set pass, set pass. All right, uh, I am going to normal summon a Witch of the Black Forest. Interesting. And I figure sure. that that set card is either Maneater Bug or uh, Wall of Illusion, and I'm pretty much fine if either of those are the case. What if I told you it's neither? Mm. I would say, please don't be playing cards like Mask of Darkness main. It's not that. It is actually the Crass Clown. I knew it! <laughs> oh, I knew it. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, God. So take your 300, sir, for that battle. Okay, so... Uh, if any of you are unfamiliar, uh, Clown Control is a deck that is technically playable at this point, though I wouldn't recommend it. Oh god, this is going to be so embarrassing if I lose. I just thought it would be all the more reason to play it right now since I'm so far ahead, because if you do lose to this, especially playing Mechanical Chaser, then uh, 
I don't know what to tell you, buddy. Oh, here you are talking up Mechanical Chaser like attack points are going to matter at all in clown control. All right, I'll cast Fissure in main phase two and get this I, disgusting clown out of here. I will happily take a Fissure on my Crass Clown. That's fine. <laughs> I will draw. I'm going to go ahead and fire off a Heavy Storm. Heavy Storm on one card. Well, I guess I'll chain my Wabaku. Fair enough. Good thing I did that first. Also doesn't matter when I Regeki your board. Regekiing a board, including Witch of the Black Forest. What if this set card was a Sangan? What would you have done then? That's all fair, but I need to kind of clean up after that Wabaku. Thinking on this Magician of the Black Forest activation, there's just so many good targets in my deck. Yeah, you can even search Mechanical Chaser. Isn't that broken? You know, I think that is what I'm going to do. <laughs> okay, so I will go ahead and set a monster, and I'll also activate Swords of Revealing Light and pass the turn. Oh, cool. I love Swords of Revealing Light. What a fun, interesting time we're going to have. All right, I will draw for turn. Now, the problem with Swords of Revealing Light is that... <laughs> I have nothing to add. <laughs> All right, I will draw for turn. Turn one on swords. I so, feel pretty confident you're not going to OTK me, but do give me a holler if you intend to. I am going to flip up Magician of Faith. I'm going to get this expected. Regeki back to my hand. Oh, no, not Regeki. I will go ahead then and follow that up with a La Jin, and we will hit in for 2,100. Woo, gosh, give me a break. Yeah. I will pass the turn. Go ahead. All right, so uh, we're going to start with a dark hole here. As expected. And then I'm going to go ahead and set two cards, just deciding on which two I want to be. We'll go like this and end my turn. All right, I will draw. That is turn two on swords. I know that you have a mechanical chaser in your hand. You're not going to be setting that. I could unfortunately. be. Fortunately, Mechanical I mean, chaser has a ton of defense. 800 whole points. I mean, it doesn't power creep uh, La Jin in terms of defense, unfortunately. <laughs> I'll go ahead and normal summon this La Jin, and we'll just attack into this. Let's see what this is. All right, exciting news. It is a wall of illusion. That's fine. I will take this back to my hand. And I will go to main phase two, and I think I'll just pass the turn. Now, the comments were very specific about how the fact that you refused to take 50 damage from a similar oh, attack last excuse game. Excuse me. Excuse me. You don't have to worry about that now with Mechanical Chaser. So. Mm, all right. I'll draw for turn. That Gosh. 50 points could matter, especially with uh, <laughs> a lot of different cards like Wall of Illusion in the game. Yeah, shocking. All right. I am going to think very carefully about this. I'm going to set one card and pass turn. Okay. Swords expires, and I will draw. It's... Probably a good a time as ever to fire off this Regeki. And I will meet that with a Solemn Judgment. Oh, he's actually on the Solemn Judgment this time around. Indeed I am. I'm on a single copy, and you, you just saw it. I definitely am not playing three. Weren't you just the one talking about how Solemn Judgment was clearly the wrong choice in the last episode? You know, I did think that that was the case, and I stand by it. Uh, however, when I have the ability to attack with Mechanical Chaser, suddenly protecting my monsters becomes a little more important. What are you so desperate to protect? That tells me that it's a flip effect, because if it were like Witcher Sangen, I don't think you'd feel too bad about it necessarily. So the flip effects could be Magician of Faith. Could be Man Eater Bug. Let's see if I can catch you off guard. I'll fire off another Swords. All right, it is a Magician of Faith. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and take back this uh, copy of Dark Hole. Fair enough. I will normal summon a copy of Sangan, and we will kill your Magician of Faith. May she rest in peace. And I will set a card and pass the turn. All right, I will draw for turn. Ooh, these rips, they are really something. Well, I figure I might as well use this opportunity to normal summon a mechanical chaser, but aside from that, I have nothing going. I'll take the opportunity to trap hole that mechanical chaser before it manages to do any damage. <laughs> turn one on swords. I'm not particularly incentivized to do a whole lot here. I think I will just go ahead and set a monster, switch my Sangan to defense, and I will pass the turn. All right, I will draw for turn. I guess this counts as setting up, right? I'll normal summon La Jin and uh, pass back to you. That is turn two on swords. I think I'll just go ahead and set a card face down and pass the turn. All right, I will draw, and I will meet your set card with one of my own. Fair enough. Swords expires, and I will be drawing for turn. That's... A good one. A little late, unfortunately. Let's go ahead and summon a copy of Legion of my own, if that's fine. That's absolutely okay. And let's try to hit into this set monster. Is a Sangan. I will activate its effect. We will get a Witch of the Black Forest to hand. 
It's always nice to rotate one for another. Very fun. Uh, with that, I will pass the turn. I'll draw. Very strange. Very strange indeed. So this set card of yours, hmm, it can't be a Magician of Faith. You would have flipped up the Magician to get the Swords of Revealing Light. That's just a little bit too tantalizing. It could be a Maneater Bug, but what is the need to fire a Maneater Bug on this board? And it could also be one of the Floaters. I guess you did play a Crass Clown in defense position at the start of this game, so it could be another Clown, and the set cards a Waboku to ensure that it survives and is able to switch to attack position. That's probably my best best case scenario. Uh, I'm gonna fire off the dark hole for the sixth three for three. It was in fact a witch of the black forest. Okay, so instead so. of a three for three, it is actually a three for five. Uh, enjoy your two cards. I will, thank you very much. Uh, witch and Sangan will trigger with one of them. I will grab magician of faith and mm -hmm. the other one, I'll grab a wall of illusion. So Sangan grabs Wall of Illusion, which grabs Magician of Faith. Sure. Uh, I'm going to normal summon a Lodge in. That is fine. And I'll get in for 18. Sure. Ugh, finally, we're doing damage. Uh, I'll set one card and pass it back to you. I will draw. It's not too bad. I will go ahead and simply set a monster and set a card. Go ahead. All right, I'll draw for turn. Uh, ugh. so the set card could be Wall of Illusion or it could be Magician of Faith. And both of those are the worst thing in the universe for me. Could also be the other card in my hand too. Oh yeah, I'm sure. Which means at that point, it could be anything. I'm going to set one card and pass turn. I will draw. How do we want to do this? I think I'll just go ahead and set another monster and I'll pass my turn. Wow, I really don't like how this is going. I'll draw for turn. I am quite confident that you would not have wasted a set that could be used on a Magician of Faith. I'm going to fire off a Raigeki. Yeah, that's a good one. Oh gosh, that is just as profitable as it possibly could be. Was that I'm off the top? Uh, no. Oh, okay. I'm gonna normal a Witch of the Black Forest. Sure. And I will proceed to combat. I will take 2,900. All right, we are getting there slowly. All right, um, thinking about main phase two. There's a lot to do and I just don't want to do any of it. All right, I'll pass the turn. I will draw. I'm gonna attempt to fire off a dark hole, which is gonna be met with a solemn judgment. I'm already knowing. Correct, but I'm sure you have a solemn judgment of your own. Uh, with that, uh, I'm gonna, oh, there's no good way to do this. Yeah, I'll solemn judgment. Yep, that resolves. Whew. Dodge the bullet on that one. I will go ahead and set a monster and pass the turn. I will draw for turn. All right, let's see if we can wrap this one up. Uh, I'm gonna fire off a heavy storm. Ooh, that's not good. I am just going to concede. I think you Woo! got it. All right. Trying to hide that really super secret set face down monster, were we? Yeah, I think it was better to uh, conceal the information. I think it was worth it. Joseph, that was a very good game one. You didn't even need Mechanical Chaser. The only time it made an appearance, it immediately got trap holed. So uh, clearly it was doing its job. <laughs> I did talk about this in my little intro. I 100% appreciate the ability to play Mechanical Chaser. The card is Nutter Butters and I didn't have to pay $1,000 for the privilege to do so, but uh, it really doesn't matter too much against hard control decks. Usually it's just eating a removal spell. Its utility is when it's able to run over Lodge in and we didn't get to see that happen. Yeah, we had a very close chance for that to happen, but uh, maybe we'll see it in this game too here. So I'll be going first and good luck, buddy. Don't forget to draw or the comments will dislike it. Draw for turn. <laughs> well, this is clown control, so I feel obligated to do this. I'm going to normal summon dream clown. Oh, damn, we're just going for it, huh? I'm going to swords of revealing light. Oh, I'm going to set a card. Go ahead. Well, that's that then, huh? Uh, <laughs> hmm. What the hell am I supposed to do against this? If we're not going to demonstrate the power of Mechanical Chaser, we can maybe demonstrate the power of Dream Cloud. <laughs> All right, I'll set one card and pass. Enjoy your freebie. I will take the freebie. Unfortunately, this is most likely just a Witch of the Black Forest or a Sangan that I'll be popping here, so. You are correct. While you're getting your Sangan search, I will put a counter on swords, showing that it is at turn one. I'm going to get Witch. He's just going to keep the cycle going. I'm going to go ahead and normal summon a copy of Witch myself, and we will get in for 1100. I'll take it, but I'm not happy about it. And I'll pass the turn. Oh, this ought to speed things along. I'll fire off a heavy storm. Uh, 4,000 yeah, life points? 
What do you that think, Alex? That would speed things up. I do. I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. I'll take that, too. <laughs> All right. Well, um, yeah, I mean, I don't really have anything else to say about this. Uh, why don't we normal summon a mechanical chaser and pass? I'm just going to wall up. All right, I'll start by switching this dream clown to attack position. Turn two on swords, by the way. Hmm. Summoned mechanical chaser. Why would he summon mechanical chaser if I can kill it next turn? That to me either means he has a way to kill my dream clown or he has a way to kill the sword so that the dream clown cannot kill him. He could have done that last turn though, so I don't exactly see the point why he wouldn't have fired off a heavy storm again. So with that being the case, I will just go ahead and set a monster and pass the turn. If you have a board wipe, so be it. I was like, you're giving me such a hot Rageki right now. All right, I'll draw for <laughs> turn. Unfortunately, I don't have a Rageki, but you know what I think might be able to get me one? Uh-oh. <laughs> That's a good card. All right, the pot's let's see it. on the other foot now, Alex. <laughs> and what do you know? Off the top. Oh <laughs> my god. Oh, All right. Here you go. So it was a witch and a sangan, so I don't Wait, lose too much on this. <laughs> I got nothing. So let's off of this grab a wall of illusion with the sangan, and I'm going to grab a dark elf with the witch. Interesting. So you're on Dark Elf, huh? All right, I'll set a Witch of the Black Forest and pass turn. I fully believe that's a witch, so <laughs> <laughs> that's fine. I'm gonna normal summon this Dark Elf, and oh, with really the only go. chance I might have to hit over this Mechanical Chaser, I will do so. Take your thousand, I'll take my 150. I will go ahead and pass the turn. Well, uh, looks like this is gonna be a quick one. I'll activate Change of Heart to take that Dark Elf. Oh God. I'll meet it with a dark elf of my own. <laughs> oh, shit. I'll bring this boy out. And uh, you might remember this play from the very first episode. It's called Oh, Change now you're just, you're just DMing at this Karibo. point, aren't you? <laughs> no, I have to play around Karibo, Alex. <laughs> oh, my gosh. All right, so I'm going to take 8 billion damage here, and uh, that's going to be the end of the game. Oh, it feels so good to sack. Oh, that was the wrong direction. <laughs> there oh, we go. wow. You know, is this, is this even what if you I feel every game, this even rush, if I, even if I set wall of illusion, uh, I like how I keep trying to like go down on life, but it keeps gaining it anyway. Yeah, I even if I, I had a wall of illusion, so I could have set that, but that would have literally ended in the same result here. Even with what you just had on board, you didn't even need the change of heart. You didn't. I mean, I'm sorry. You didn't need the monster reborn chaser mm -hmm. plus witch plus wall would have killed me. So yeah. it was uh, yeah, it was I, my hand was just all monsters and a heavy storm. So I just really had not much to do there. But yeah, that must be what it feels like to go up against the anime protagonist, isn't it? Joseph. <laughs> yeah, for real. Gosh, now I know how every one of uh, Yugi's losses felt. Look at this. My graveyard is Reborn, Change of Heart, Raigeki, Pot of Greed, Heavy Storm. Like, just a rogues gallery of banned garbage. I mean, when you have four of the Power Five, it must feel pretty good. But to be <laughs> fair, that's pretty much how the last four games went of the history of Yu-Gi-Oh! for me, so... <laughs> it's pretty frustrating because I feel like this format in particular, I know M. Cole has done a significant amount of work on it, is actually super deep. There's multiple arc archetypes you can play. There's tons of approaches you can take towards deck building, but sometimes it's just decided by Pot of Greed, Magician of Faith loops, uh, which I was prepared to do should the opportunity present itself. Oh, you had the Magician of Faith this time too. Yeah. I, I mean, that's just, cards. yeah, I mean, that's just what happens sometimes. And there's really nothing you can do about it. Yu-Gi-Oh at its finest, you know, even if the only real card that would have saved me there apart from Mirror Force would be like Waboku, right? Mm -hmm. And Waboku specifically, I mentioned this in my deck building is very interesting with Dream clown because not only does it allow me to live a turn but if i have dream clown up and you don't have spell removal then uh dream clown actually gets a chance to then actually fight back pop one of your things and i can mount some sort of comeback but very neat nice situation of course it was really unfortunate in the first game i drew dream clown after using both of my copies of swords of revealing light probably a misplay yeah. on my part i didn't need to like preemptively shotgun them but we were uh just trying to see what we could do but i'm it's happy so you got your first win after all this time <laughs> yeah i'm happy as well uh my methodology for this was just thinking, well, we've got access to Chaser and Alex doesn't. Alex is going to play some blisteringly slow control deck that runs as many swords and wabokus as they are literally allowed to. We'll just try and out aggro them. And I'm glad it worked out. But honestly, if, if you're following us along on our journey through the halls of Yu-Gi-Oh! time, this is the first format where I feel compelled 
to ask you to take a shot at it. Certainly the ones before have been either sacky or not interactive enough to warrant a mention. Uh, this one is a lot of fun. I played for maybe six or seven hours just games in MRD format and it's it's a blast. Yeah, it's a lot of fun just because there's so many small interactions and it's not really too overly complicated. This is a great way to introduce someone to Yu-Gi-Oh, maybe apart from Mechanical Chaser, but just <laughs> at the surface level, it's very basic bare bones Yu-Gi-Oh. You've got your normal summons. You've got just some very simple effects like Magician of Faith, which cards tutor one another. You've got some bouncing defensive cards like Wall of Illusion and the like. And that's really what Yu-Gi-Oh was at its core before it kind of amalgamized into what it is today, which is just a giant combo fest not all the time but you know <laughs> for the most part but yeah. i mean yeah it's definitely a throwback to the old golden days that's for sure it is frustrating that modern Yu-Gi-Oh can often feel like whoever sets up first wins and this is just a type of gameplay that doesn't exist anymore and uh this format specifically has sort of reached a uh, vanishing point where uh, traps are very good. Um, there is variety in the cards you could potentially be playing. Play styles aren't particularly changeable yet. It's not like we have like a really well-developed control, a really well-developed aggro, and a really well-developed combo deck. Uh, but even within like different variants of aggro decks, there's just so much you can do. Like the cards I was shaving are so good. I, I didn't play um, uh, Tribute to the Doomed this time around because I just had too much good stuff to play. I didn't either, actually. With my approach this time around, especially knowing that you were going to be on Chaser as well, I decided to just go for the full three Fisher because at that point, that's just going to be the main target for Mechanical Chaser most of the time. And so yep. if I could just have an easy, clean way to one-for-one one remove it, yeah, you've still got Wall of Illusion. Yeah, you've still got Magician of Faith. But honestly, that's not really what I have to worry about because this card is just so difficult to out because because it's basically a wall of illusion, but in attack position and is threatening to kill my threats every single turn. And the only thing that really mounts any sort of defense against it is wall of illusion. Apart from that, it just hits over every single card in my deck. Again, Dark Elf was just this card that is a way to kind of hedge against it, but you're having to pay a thousand life points for every single attack. So yeah, it could like wall against a mechanical chaser, but how long is that going to last in a format where Fissure's around, Magician of Faith, Regeki, Dark Hole, and the like? It's not too likely that Dark Elf was going to stay around for too long. For sure. One of the things I found most interesting looking at uh, people's profiles of this format is that uh, when it was being played, no one was on Dark Elf, just because no one was on mechanical chaser so why would you play dark elf to profitably trade with it um but since the advent of online play uh and since people have access to all cards suddenly it's a staple <laughs> you have to play dark elf to be mechanical chaser it's just so interesting how uh formats that existed for a matter of months uh can be whittled down to uh to the best possible decks by people years and years later yeah you beat me to the punch because i was just about to say i really love how people still continue to play these formats that were played over you know a decade decade and a half ago and are still continuing to modernize it. Even people would go to the extreme to play cards like Jirai Gumo, which is oh 2200. Gosh. You're paying half your life to attack. But again, it's a way to clear over Mechanical Chaser. It's a large beater. So if you really want to go aggro, that card can allow you to do so. But the fact that even a card like that actually has a reasonable place in a format like this, I think this goes to show the amount of depth and time people have dedicated to a format like this to really kind of break it wide open and explore all the possibilities. I also like too that we're at a point where you are starting to see some diversification. You know, you're starting to see the seedlings of aggro and control, but they are still playing a majority of the same cards. But on the history of Yu-Gi-Oh, Joe System and I want to start to diversify that and move in a direction where you're going to start to see different decks per episode to really give you an overall coverage of what a metagame was like. Right now in these early stages, we're not at that point yet because this is how the game was played there really wasn't a diversified enough card pool for that to be the case and so there is going to be that tipping point later on but i think it'll be exciting when joseph and i might bring two or three different decks to the table and you get to see some of those matchups and how it played out it's going to make for a much more fun time one of the things i really wanted to ask you about was the fact that you're on solemn judgment this time and honestly i don't blame you for it but i want to hear your reasoning if it's parallel to what I was thinking for why you'd want to play it this time. Uh, so, uh, I want to issue an apology. Uh, last time I talked a lot of crap about Judgment after, uh, playing a significant amount of the format. I've done a complete 180. Judgment is the craziest card in this format. Uh, yes, you are spending all of your life points on Dark Elf activations and, uh, hits from things like, uh, Dream Clown and Witch of the Black Forest. 
but it's just so strong. I ended up playing it because I'm an aggro deck and the ability to tempo your normal summon or prevent comeback mechanics either in like a Raigeki or a flipped Magician of Faith adding back a Raigeki is just so valuable. I had conceived of it as a way to stop Heavy Storm specifically, but it turns out its most powerful use is to just tempo your opponent out of the game and it's fantastic at doing that. I mean, look at that game one. You used one Solemn Judgment on my Raigeki and you used a second on my Dark Hole and those two would have just set you back so far that we would have had a much longer game one had that been the case. And so I 100% percent agree with you solemn judgment is just an absurd card it can also duel as heavy storm protection which to be fair did it in this game did i have to protect my heavy storm prop or uh, my swords of revealing light rather probably not but just to be able to resolve that dream clown you know it's dream clown is where so much of the advantage of this deck can really shine and so i really wanted to see how far we could take it plus if you don't have an out to it then it's just going to be a nightmare for you <laughs> dream clown is such a weird card because i i think even uh it was powerful in duel links for a very short amount of time at the very beginning it really is is one of the first examples of a card that just takes over the entire game. Like, as soon as this card is summoned, you're not playing Yu-Gi-Oh! You're playing out the Dream Clown right now or you're dead. And uh, Swords of Revealing Light is a great way to prevent that from happening but you do have to back it up with some amount of offensive threats. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you have other defensive cards like Trap Hole, Solemn Judgment, you know, even the one Mirror Force that we have, but if you can't really capitalize on the pressure, then Dream Clown can be this card that you wish it was just something else, and that really was kind of the case for me in both of these games that I had a Dream Clown in my hand. I had a Dream Clown in my hand the first game as well, and there was just never an opportune time to be able to play it because you already had Lodge in established. All I had set face down was a Trap Hole, and and so there was no way that I could guarantee that the Dream Clown survives a turn. So if you have the initiative, Dream Clown can be an incredible setup. But if you're behind, Dream Clown is a card that is really difficult to pull you back in the game. It is very, it's definitely a tempo oriented card. And I think that definitely showed in this set for sure. And what you're seeing is kind of the development of proto archetypes. You know, uh, the invention of an archetype surrounding Dream Clown in order to milk as much advantage out of it as possible. I think in future episodes, you're going to see... Uh, the invention of archetypes get more and more and more concrete. Well, Joseph, at the end of the day, I was trying to make a clown out of you, but it looks like I was the one who got clowned. So uh, good game. Good game. You know, uh, <laughs> I'm not going to call you a wash up, but you certainly do have some laundry to do, don't you? Yeah, uh, looks like I'm going to be wearing the shirt of shame next episode, but uh, it's OK. Mine's been uh, squeaky clean for the last four weeks, so I have nothing to complain about. I will happily adorn the shirt of shame proudly. It's not going to be on my back for too long because after next week and Spell Ruler, and keep in mind, this is Spell Ruler pre ban list, Joseph. So oh, you thought this episode was degenerate? Just wait till next time. We're really going to have to play top deck turbo, huh? For people who don't know, Spell Ruler or Magic Ruler, rather, is going to introduce the hand destruction cards, namely Confiscation, Forceful Century, Delinquent Duo. And that's funny because that sounded exactly like the intro to these videos. But yeah, and they all we come are just out at the same time. Yes, and they were all at three for a very, very short period of time. So I thought it'd be fun to just have one episode where you get to experience what it was like to play Yu-Gi-Oh! for this very miserable period of time. I'm excited. <laughs> I'm excited too. I, I can't, I know it's going to be bad and unwatchable, but I'm so excited to play it. So guys, that's going to wrap it up for this episode of the history of Yu-Gi-Oh! Hashtag Team Simo, hashtag Team MBT. MBT's on the board with a win now, but we still have a lot more episodes to cover. There's going to be a lot Lot more exciting matches to come before we go though i do want to shout out my patrons who support us over on patreon so big shout outs to Sharkman, gray lane mystic walk michael dente joshua wiley sylvia wilds oli tim 00x3 pony stark thomas nelson kel of devils emil cohen adam evans jarvis martin dolly wop the g-man 99 matthew farenbacher logan thomas peter gregory luca petrovic dragon lord gerstein gw and draconic thank you all so much for your support guys i hope you're excited for magic ruler because it's going to be insane thank you so much for watching and we will see you next time